Two two-pound coins, first made by the Royal Mint back in 1998, there are two different metal components, so it's complicated to manufacture and very difficult to counterfeit. The problem is, this one wasn't made by the Royal Mint. It was made by a faker. A leading expert has told us it's the best he's ever seen. But how many are out there? Who's making them? Could you tell the difference? Previously on Fake Britain, we've seen huge hordes of fake coins. Here, police were raiding the premises of criminals, churning out one pound fakes. Coin bags, loads. An estimated one in 31 pound coins is fake. The Royal Mint is so concerned, they'll soon be introducing this new 12-sided pound coin to combat the counterfeiters. And now the fakers are turning their attention to their two pound coin. And that's a problem for Andy Brown. His company services coin-operated machines across the country. In the last year, he's seen an increase in the number and quality of the new two-pound fakes. It's a far cry from how the coin fakers started out. So this is one of the early fakes that we, we found, which is really just a lump of lead tin alloy and then spraying it gold to make it look like a genuine coin. That was then. Now fake two-pound coins are getting much closer to the genuine article. The fakes have got much better. They can now be accepted in some of the vending machines and car park machines that are out in the field. For us, the concern is to try and stop the fakers before they really start getting going. Today, Fake Britain has asked Andy to see if he can find any of the latest fake two-pound coins in circulation. He's going to his local bank to withdraw two and a half thousand pounds worth of two-pound coins. He expects to find some fakes amongst all 1,250 of them. We're going to uh, put them through the coin validator to see if any of them get rejected, and then we can check to see whether they're counterfeits. This coin validator is identical to anything you'd find inside a ticket or vending machine. It takes 16 different measurements of the coin, including its width and weight, to work out if it's genuine or not. Any coin outside the validator gets rejected out of a different slot and generally would be returned back to the customer if he was putting it in the machine. None of the coins from the bank have been rejected by the validator, but Andy knows that the latest fakes are good enough to beat the machine. So using his experience and a keen eye, he and a colleague sift through the coins to try and find anything unusual. Halfway through the batch, Andy spots something out of the ordinary. We've discovered a coin that looks a bit different to all the rest. It's a 2011, which is one of the years that we've got a number of counterfeit coins for already. This may look convincing, but there's a simple test to tell the fake from the real thing. If we go to a genuine coin, one of the quick and easiest tests to discover whether a coin is counterfeit is to, to hold it up with a two pound at the top and a date at the bottom and then spin the coin on its axis and the queen's head should be facing upwards what we would call 12 o'clock and on the fake when we turn the head round it's more like it's at three o'clock so that one is definitely a counterfeit coin but it's only by using a microscope that andy can uncover the signature markings of a fake now i've got the counterfeit and a genuine coin side by side then we're just checking the rim inscription to see what difference there is there and straight away when we look at the mint marks the one on the bottom is a genuine coin you can see the nice mint mark which looks really well stamped and the one on the top is the counterfeit with the poor mint mark and as we go around the edge lettering is all totally different the text is very poorly done particularly the letter s is a very distinctive letter on on this counterfeit and the a's which has got like a circle in the center of it Next, Andy takes his find downstairs for computer analysis to have a more detailed look at the properties of the fake two-pound coin. Now, yeah, Chris, I'd like to try and calibrate that one for us. Here, he can measure the probability of the coin beating a vending machine in the outside world. And there's no stopping this two-pound fake. It beats the coin validator again and again, 30 times out of 30 and beyond. <laughs> So we've now inserted the coin over 100 times and we've still got a 100% acceptance rate. Even genuine coins get rejected now and then due to their imperfections. But it's 
seems this fake could be better than the real thing. We would expect a genuine coin to have something like a 95% acceptance rate. So it's quite concerning that we've got a counterfeit coin that's given us a 100% acceptance rate. And that is a bit of a worry, isn't it? The performance of the fake he's found today could have much wider implications for Britain's coinage. Some vending operators deposit their money into a bank via a cash centre. So if this coin can be accepted by a validator, it would generally be accepted as a genuine coin in a sorting machine. So they won't be able to take them out of circulation. <laughs> it's thought that there are hundreds of thousands of fake £2 coins in circulation. But with the latest fakes able to fool a machine, can they also fool consumers? It's a normal £2 coin, isn't it? Well, I'll make it. It looks a genuine article, a normal £2 coin. If you're um, walking in the streets and you're exchanging this very quickly, you wouldn't know the difference? Well, it's the same way, I think. If someone came in and gave me this as £2, I'd think it was an actual £2 and, and accept it, yeah. Yeah, this is dangerous, actually. <laughs> Fake Britain wanted to know what the experts make of the new high-end £2 fakes. We arranged for Andy to take it to the Goldsmiths Company, an assay office in the heart of London that's tested and hallmarked precious metals for nearly seven centuries. Every year they check and approve a selection of Britain's coinage. Goldsmiths' Dave Merry is here to analyse Andy's fake £2 coin. <laughs> A bit of busy man by the look of it. We have, yes. So this is one we found last week, which is of a much better quality. Yeah. Being accepted by most of the vending machines. Limited hell, yeah, you can see why on that. Dave Merry's immediately impressed by the look of the coin. But you can also tell a lot about a coin by how much it weighs. So Dave puts the fake two pound coin to the test using his scales. The Royal Mint's published weight for a genuine two pound coin is 12 grams. Um, and we've just weighed the counterfeit one. And again, we're getting a reading of 12 grams. It's remarkably close to a genuine Royal Mint coin. The weight of the fake two pound coin matches that of a real one. But Dave wants to know exactly what the fake is made of. And to do that, he'll have to x-ray it. The great thing about the spec kit is it will give you a readout of percentages of actually all those different elements that go to make up a coin. A genuine two pound coin is bimetallic, meaning it's made up of two different copper nickel alloy metals. This makes the outer ring gold and the inner part bright silver. The bimetallic feature was introduced by the Royal Mint to make it harder for the fakers to copy coins. First, Dave shows us the composition of the inner part of the genuine coin. It's just over 70% copper and nearly 30% nickel. Now, how about the composition of the fake? We can see straight away we've got 68% copper, 31% nickel, um, and there's a trace element of iron in there. This is a very good fake. The figures look... Um, much more closer than I've seen previously for other fake coins. That sort of coincides with what we've seen with the validators, really, where it's being accepted by some of the validators. So right, it okay. would seem that the metal content is obviously fairly close to that of a genuine coin. Yeah. The outer yellow ring of a genuine two pound coin also contains the metal zinc. The fakers have even managed to get that into their fake. We've got nickel, copper, and 14.2% zinc. So we've got the added element there now which wasn't in the middle part which is obviously the zinc so a really good quality fake all the figures are fairly close to that of a genuine coin yeah very very close the fakers have cracked the royal mint by metallic safety measures if experts are having difficulty consumer i have got no hope of being able to tell the difference we showed the results of our tests on the fake two pound coin to robert matthews a former assay master of the royal mint this is certainly the best two-pound counterfeit that I've seen. Robert's concerned about the implications of the huge amount of effort that's gone into this fake two-pound coin. It is worrying that this counterfeit and the alloys used point to a sophistication which tends to point towards a 
organised crime being used. Once organised crime is starting to get involved, we are going to have more and more of a problem. We reported our discovery of this sophisticated fake £2 coin to the Royal Mint. They told us they ensure every effort is made to reduce the number of forgeries entering circulation. They also told us that forgers would require a highly sophisticated press to produce bicolour coins. Difficult to produce, but they are being produced in their thousands. Recently, over 550,000 bimetallic euro coins were seized in the port of Naples on the way from Shanghai. Experts are worried that shipments of similar £2 fakes could be arriving on our shores. The £2 counterfeiting is entering a new stage and this should be tackled now. Whether it means changing the coin, we need to be thinking seriously now about um, how to increase the security of the £2 coin. Coming up, we go back in time to see the fake collectible coins that are also duping members of the public.